we're just going to quickly go over this problem right here. Uh, basically, I did it in class and I wanted to be, um, I want to just do it one more time to be a little clearer. Uh, so, we have a piece of cork having a specific weight, a gamma of 2.36 kilonewtons per meter cubed. The shape is shown right here. So, basically, it's a triangle and it's a cork. Um, to what depth will it sink in turpentine, which has a specific gravity of 0 0.87, if placed in the orientation shown? So the water would be, or the or turpentine would be along here. And B, is it stable in this position? So I've just got a, a drawing of on the right here. So we've got 600 millimeters here. I'm going to work in millimeters today. The height is 300, right? 300. Yeah, 300. So, the first thing we need to get, the first question we were asked is to what depth will it sink? And if you think about it, we've typically dealt with square hauled objects where the cross sectional area is continuous. But in this, in this case, the further it goes down, this piece of cork, the less it's going to displace because when the water hits here, it's displacing the amount at the, or at, with the sorry, at the turpentine is here it displaces that amount, but as it moves up further, it displaces less and less. So you need to figure out what is the area of displacement such that the force of your buoyancy equals the weight of the cork. So the first thing, um, so really what we're, we're going to break this, tr this area here, which is submerged in the turpentine into a triangle a rectangle and another triangle. So we're going <coughs> to first going to look at the area displaced. Remember the force buoyancy equals the specific value weight of the fluid you're in times the volume and the force down in this case is just going to be the specific weight times the volume. Okay. So first of all we're going to look at solving for the area displaced. So this area here, how much that is, um, which is submerged in the turpentine. So the area displaced, if we go down here, it's really 600, this value here, minus x times the height, which is, sorry, minus 2x minus 2x because we have an x on each side and then that all that's going to be multiplied by x the height so this is your your base and your height your length and your width plus one half x squared because this is x and this is x and all that since we have two it's going to be two triangles so this is going to equal 600 minus 2x x minus x squared plus x squared okay so now let's expand this out so it's going to be 600 x minus 2x squared plus x squared equals 600 x minus x squared. So that's going to be our area displaced. So as I said earlier, the force buoyancy equals specific weight of gravity or the specific weight of the turpentine, in this case 0 0.87 times specific weight of water, times your volume displaced. And this is all equal to the specific weight of the fluid times the area displaced times the length. And in this case, the length is 1,200 millimeters. Okay. And all of this has to equal the weight, the weight of the entire piece of cork. Okay. So really, your area displaced has to equal your weight over the specific value of the fluid, specific weight of the fluid, 
times the length. Okay, well, what does weight equal? Weight equals the specific weight of the cork, say key C, times its volume, right, which is length base height over 2. So the area of the triangle times the length. So now I've got 2.36 kilonewtons per meter cubed times 1.2 meters because I'm going to stick with meters here uh, because we've got meters cubed here times your base which is 0 0.0, 0 0.6 times your height which is 0 0.3 and all this equals 0 0.255 kilonewtons Okay, and that is this term right here. Okay, so we know our area displaced is equal to this. Sorry, is equal to this right here. So now we need to figure out what this area displaced equals. So that's going to equal 0 0.255 kilonewtons over, what's my SG, 0. 87 times 98, 9.8.81 kilonewtons per meter cubed times the length, which is 1.2 meters. And I realize now this is probably a little confusing because this is in meters and this is in millimeters, but let's just solve this value here in terms of millimeters squared. So it's 2.489 10 to the fourth millimeters squared. And this all equals 600 x minus x squared. So we should recognize at this point that this is now a quadratic formula, right? So this can be changed to x squared minus 600x, 600x, minus 2.489 times 10 to the fourth millimeters. Th I guess the whole thing's in millimeters, sorry. So now we just need to use, and that all equals zero. So this is a quadratic. And basically use your quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And you, when you plug and chug that in, you get x is equal to 44.8 millimeters. So that's this height up here. And in this case, also the width of the triangle. But yes, it's sitting at... 44.89 millimeters into the water. So we know that is where the buoyancy force is going to offset the mass of the object. So next we need to look at where is our center of buoyancy. So our center of buoyancy is again this is going to be one of these centroids. So we know for the two triangles the centroid is at one-third x and then we know for the rectangle, the centroid's in the middle, so x over 2. So you probably recognize this formula for set finding the center of a centroid, finding the center of an area. So we're going to say sigma a, all the areas, times some unknown x bar is equal to the sum of all the areas times all of their respective x bars. So in this case, it's going to equal 1 half 44.8 millimeters times the so base times height 44.8 millimeters times 44.8 millimeters. So that becomes 44.8 squared. And it, one more time, I'm going to go 44.8 
over 3. And this is the, the distance to the center of the triangle, the centroid of the triangle, not the center. Okay. And we should know that there are two triangles, so this is multiplied by 2. And then you've got 5, 10, 0.4, which is 600 minus 44.8 times 2, times 44.8. So this is now the area. This term here is the area. And all that's going to be times 44.8 over 2. Okay, and when you solve this, you take the sum of your areas, you bring it over, and you get x bar is equal to 21.8. And I think that's the thing that was really confusing in the solution from the from the from the textbook was that that formula that they did this with was really complicated. It was like, where is that from? Okay, so let's just draw a line here. So where's our location of the center of gravity now? So L or YCG equals one third three hundred millimeters equals one hundred millimeters. Okay? We know and this is in the grand scheme of our procedure is step three for solving for stability of a floating object. So the minimum I now is equal to base height cubed over 12. So in this case, it's going to be 1,200. It's going to be the base because that's going to give you the minimum value. It's going to be millimeters. And this next one, the height, is going to be your 510.4. That's going to be cubed over 12. So that's going to equal 1.3926. 1.3926 times 10 to the 10 millimeters to the fourth, which is a very large number. I think we can all agree. Yes, sir, this is step four and five. Now we're going to get to six. That's going to be MB equals I over volume displaced, which is equal to 1.3926 times 10 to the tenth millimeters to the fourth. over 1200 millimeters for length bracket 600 44.8 minus 44.8 squared so this is volume display. So 600x minus x squared. Remember this? 600x minus x squared. All of that times the length gives you 445 millimeters. So 7 YMC equals YCB plus MB equals 21.8 millimeters plus 444, 445 millimeters, which equals 467 millimeters. So our YMC, YMMC, sorry, MC, is greater than YCG, so we are stable. So again, the one thing I think I confused people with in class, and I'll agree that it was pretty confusing in the solution, was that in order you need to find the, c the centroid of center of buoyancy, and that's what you do right here. Center of buoyancy. You should take the sum of all the areas that are submerged times some x or some unknown x bar 
and you set that equal to the sum of all the smaller areas times their respective x-bars, or their centroids, and you multiply all this out, you divide through by a, and you get this 21.8, and if you think about it, right here, this is 21.8, goes there, Okay, and this is, what was this, 44? 44.8. So it's a little under half, which makes sense because you have a triangle here. And there's more area down here than up here. So that is the end of the solution.